Welcome to Between Data and Risk podcast. Today, we'll talk about myths around IT capabilities, rules of cooperation between IT and business, and about successful change management with our guest, Ken Ponder, Chief Information Officer at Viscous Companies. Stay tuned. If you're a business owner or senior manager, you probably had more than enough about all the wonderful opportunities awaiting you in the era of digitalization. Whether it is big data, cloud, data science, or whatever buzzword is currently trendy. If you would like to hear someone dissecting these claims and showing you what it actually takes to improve business processes, you're in the right place. This is Between Data and Risk, where we discuss real life examples of what works and what doesn't in the world of business operations. Hi. I'm your friendly neighborhood data guy, Dr. Marian Sipiak, and with me is my co-host, Artur Buja, Cognition Shared Solutions Chief Risk and Strategy Officer. Hello. Welcome to this episode of Between Data and Risk. Today, we'll take a look at the role of IT and best practices around IT business cooperation in today's organizations. We have with us Ken Ponder, Chief Information Officer at Viscas Companies, who agreed to share some of his experiences with us. Hello, Ken. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Marian, Arthur. Uh, we're excited to, to, to have you with us. We work a lot in, in our capacity as, as consultants with uh, IT departments, and uh, we know how critical they are in yeah, enabling data and uh, also mitigating some risks for, for, for business operations of today's, uh, today's businesses. Uh, however, we also noted that IT is shrouded in, in the thick cloud of myths and preconceptions and uh, um, wishful thinking as well. Uh, do you mind sharing with us, maybe it's not a typical start, but like, you know, the, the things that you, or preconceptions that you need to fight yourself. So the, the myths, you know, ex overblown expectations or... or like, because uh, in our expect in our in our experience, it's either IT can do everything and they, they, they should solve every problem, or they on the on the other hand, some people think they they are really the root of all evil, and they are the source of our problems in the company. If you know, if we could only get rid of computers, so which which side of the spectrum are you on? And uh, you know, what what are what are your experiences? Well, I've. I've... I've been in IT for over 38 years, so I've had a, a few experiences through uh, several several different companies. Um, you know, the misconceptions that you that you run into is that you know everything is available all the time. You know, we have all of this data, we have all of this. Stuff. Well, you know, just give me access to everything. That's the that's the one thing that you get right um, is give me everything. And usually it's from the finance department. <laughs> but, um, that's, that's, I think, the biggest misconception that, you know, business side has that, you know, just because you have a system like SAP, Oracle, um, that this data can be read by any of the reporting tools that are out there. Um, so that's, that's a, a big battle that you go through is that the data has to be prepped, the data has to be set up, models so that they can. Um, that's a challenge, uh, and that's been anywhere I've been. Uh, this case or the company. So, I've been uh, I've I've been on the kind of my, my weirdest experience as I because I used to be I used to be in IT. And my weirdest experience was when I, I was showing a, a guy from, from the trading desk in a bank, a, a sales guy, a spreadsheet, which was connecting to a dozen different databases, pulling data from various things and, and to price a product. And uh, he was very impressed. He, was, he, he, he really liked this. Much. So now he said, you know what? Install it on my laptop so I can take it to a client and show it to him on premises. I'm like, no, it's connecting to all these systems. Yeah, yeah just dump them on my laptop. It will be fine. <laughs> so I, I totally, I totally get where you're, where you're coming from when people say, you know, just give me access to all this data. The truth is in there somewhere, right? <laughs> and, right. Uh, but 
how 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 do you then explain to people uh because if you if you refuse to to, to give them access to data obviously they're upset so how do how do you explain to them that this the data needs to be accessed properly i think a lot of the times what happens is that they do have a, a misconception that this data is readily available and i think that they get information um whether incorrect or correct information from all the data sources that they read, right? So they're like, oh, well, you know, Google says that this is out there in the cloud. I can get this anytime I want. Um, and, you know, it's bringing them down to reality and helping them understand that, you know, this is, you know, a lot of the data that you're accessing or a lot of the data that you're utilizing reports or proprietary information for our company. You don't want this floating around out on the on the web somewhere. Everybody has access to it. Um, you know, being able to produce a report that uh, they can display or that they can show to a customer, sales is a big deal with that, right? Um, you want to be able to say, okay, look, you know, we can give you this report. You can have access to it, but that data is not going to be live. Generate the report, put it on your laptop, then you can go and you. Show them the report if you want to, but you can't do certain things. Um, it's an education process, and they, and they don't always want to know, right? It's like, why well, that's not the answer that I wanted. Well, you know that that's reality. Yeah, it's uh, Arthur, me. Uh, <laughs> I, I I was wondering because you said you have thirty eight years of uh, of experience under your belt. Uh, if you would compare different industries, you know, and, and the change that is, because right now uh, we've seen um, the uh, advertisement of new chat GPT function, which is a uh, possibility to upload your own data. And they say, now everybody will be a data scientist. It's like everybody will be their own, uh, you know, uh, sheep and, and steering wheel and sail of their, of their data journey. Uh, like from your perspective, looking where it all started to today and looking into the future with all this uh, making, I would say slicing and dicing data easier with every day, like how, how, how is your feeling, how it connects to actual business value derived from, 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 from data is making, because it, it very much resonates what you said that give me everything, just give me access and I will do everything. Uh, how how this, because let's say we have these limitations on data availability, but even if we didn't, uh, how how would it end for, for businesses if everybody could just, you know, jump on all the data and put GPT on it and create beautiful charts? Yeah. Self-service analytics, right? Yeah, that's that's my, my, yeah, my, my that favorite lot. topic. Yeah. Um, so... Sometimes it, 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 they're kind of kind of like a child, right? You got to let them make their own mistakes before they really realize that, that okay, well, I, I don't know. Um, when when you go th when I've gone through the, the you know the years that I've been in IT, we we see the transformation of data, right? So you know, it used to be you know you had a, a room the size of a football field that had DASD drives, right? Now I can store that same amount of information on my laptop, even on my phone. So it's, you know, you see that, you know, size wise, yes, it's across quite a bit. When you look at the analytics of it, the problem that you run into when you're having self service is that they don't always have all of the information or all of the correct way of, of merging that data. So when they put it together, you know, they think that report looks great, but yet it's missing a, a big part of it, right? So if you're doing regional, like I have regional data, right? So you've got mm -hmm. you know, data coming out of out of Europe, or you've got data coming out of Asia Pacific. When you merge that data, it might be missing, you know, internal transfer costs. It might be missing, you know, uh, that that shipment actually didn't go to that customer. To another customer in, you know, another uh, 
country. Right? So mm -hmm. they don't always take that into consideration because that's not where their mind is, right? Their mm -hmm. mind is, ah, oh, you know, I'm going to produce this report and it's going to look great. It's not, and they're not correct, right? That data or that report is not correct. And they don't always know that. So they're displaying it to their management going, ah, see, here's, here's our sales. It's been doing great. Well, guess what? You, you forgot to bring in the data for all the returns. Yeah. <laughs> and know, and so let, let me guess, if it goes wrong, it's IT's fault. Oh, of course. <laughs> so, 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 we can we can end up in situation where somebody is presenting income and telling that it's profit because he forgot to subtract the cost. Uh, it's a bit extreme, but I guess that's the, that's the gist of it. Uh, how do you how do you approach? Because I know that you are big in, in educating people and in in, in ensuring that uh, yeah, human. From my data science experience. I didn't use wishful thinking earlier as an accident. There is a lot of wishful thinking, uh, let's say, included when you when you enable uh, self-serve data analytics. The, I think I, uh, I mentioned this case in some episodes ago, where we produced a report showing that some activity was suboptimal, let's say, mm. uh, in terms of efficiency, uh, not to call it downright uh, ha harmful. And the, the the leader of this activity said, "No, I don't want this analysis. It doesn't that, that doesn't suit suit me. I cannot show it to the to the leadership. So so please uh, change something so it doesn't look so bad." Right. Uh, how, how do you? Because there are two elements. One is like technical ability or even statistical ability, and the other is how easy it is to forget to add returns, consciously or subconsciously. Yeah, so the 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 culture of the of the business, right? That if it's coming out of the system, it must be right, you know. And you know, I'm pulling this directly from here, so it has to be right. And you know, the the data is input, right, by humans, right? They're they're mm -hmm. entering the data, you know, whether it's a sales order, or whether it's a Turn order, whether it's a shipment, raw materials, it doesn't matter. It, that's being input by by a human. Mm -hmm. There's always margin for error, and you're always going to have that sense from the business side that if it's in the system, it must be right. You know, you know so and so put this in, and and they're always so accurate. The thing is, is that there's validation that has to go. Through on the on the IT side from the DBAs, they have to go in and validate it to make sure that it's been put in correct. You know, a batch job didn't, so that data is not there today. You know, there's so many things that can go wrong, and you try to dummy it down to the business side and explain to them that oh, you know, this is this is the reason that that data is not correct. We're we're working on correcting. Of course, what Archer said. Yes, it's always IT's fault. Um, it was it never anybody else's, <laughs> you know, mistake. But you know, working with you know designated people, each of the business, and helping them understand this. These are the things that have to transpire in the report to be correct, and. You know, sometimes it works, it doesn't. Um, what I chose to do in my particular instance now is I've brought in business analysts. Those business analysts are dedicated to those different businesses. And they bridge that gap between technology and the business. So to help them, you know, on a full-time basis, educate them on how the data flows, how it comes out correct, what kind of reporting can be done, um, even if it's self-service. You know, yes, you can connect to this, but you need to connect to this specific model, this specific data set in order to derive that information. Um, you know, there's so many, if you, if you just take one application, 
you say, okay, let's just take the HANA database, right, out of, out of SAP. And let's look at really what the content is. There are so many tables in ECC6. You have three or four people that work in supporting SAP that don't even know what all those tables are. So it's, it's important that we have that gap filled by someone who can bridge that education and, and that knowledge base um, and explain it to them in their terms, not in technical terms, right? Because they don't understand when we start talking about ETL tools. Uh, okay. you, know, you know, a DBA, they're like, what's a DBA? Now, so those are the, you know, those seem simple, but it's very, very much reality on their side, on the business side. I want to take the kind of the, 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 the opposite stance now, because I've, I've, as I say, I've been in IT and I've, I've, I was trained in IT, but uh, I've been on the user side, on the other side of the fence for about um, 15 years now. And uh, the trend I, I saw is that obviously I, IT costs, they, they, they rise very high. The, IT, with all due respect to IT departments, they want they want to do things correctly. They want to do right, safe systems, accessible systems, redundant systems, but the costs are very high. The time time scales are very very long. Business sometimes cannot wait. And what I what I saw, especially in my few recent uh, postings, is that it results in the business solving uh, the problems their own way. And as you said, you've got business analysts, right? A little knowledge is a dangerous thing because such a business analyst in a self-serve way can build a tool, cobble it together, draw the data in, and effectively you're, you end up with a shadow IT system, which is usually very tuned to a specific business purpose. But the moment that something changes on the IT side, there's an upgrade somewhere which is not fully backwards compatible, it completely breaks, and all hell usually breaks loose. How do you, and we used to call it EUC, end user computing, which usually translated into a nightmare. How do you enable that while protecting against these kinds? Because you cannot make every single upgrade backwards compatible, right? It's, it's a right. dream, but it's not always, always possible. How do you enable that while, while, while still keeping a, le a tight leash on it so that so so that it doesn't cause more problems than it solves. So I'd address the shadow IT, I guess, is the best way to handle that one. Yeah. Um, regardless of what size company you're in, you're never going to prevent it. It's going to get. It's going to be out there sooner or later. Um, you know, and you know, I, I I put that on the same level as duct tape, and you know. <laughs> They say duct tape fix, fixes everything, right? And you you look at it from, you know, yes, they needed to have this business they saw that was priority for them. They had to solve it. We were taking too long. You know, IT was taking too long. And, and gosh, I'm not going to spend that kind of money. Um, the limitations of what happens when they, when they do that are only realized when we do something like, an upgrade, or we change the data designation. Uh, we change the data warehouse, right? So now we're moving from you know uh, Google to the data data sphere. Um, those type of things they're not going to be familiar with. Um, right now, we've got security that regulates all of our data, and our security system was set up to not just protect our systems from ransomware and attacks and things like that, but it was set up to protect our data. So, you know, they can't get access to things unless we give them security access. I know that sounds, you know, cruel. They can run a, a Z report and download it to a spreadsheet and, and do a report if they want to. But again, that's restricted date type data, right? They can only get the data that's accessible from that report and put it out to a CSV file. Do I think that 
you know, there's going to be instances where they're going to have shadow IT doing something else. Oh, absolutely. You know, they, they get frustrated because we've restricted their Wi-Fi access um, through the data access point or the access points. And so they uh, bring in their own wireless access point. You know, I mean, or they put it on their cell phone and all of a sudden that we're finding out that running a Xbox Pro at the so those are, you know, you're never going to, you're never going to fully prevent it. All you can do is say, you know, here are the restrictions. Here are the things that we're doing to our data to infrastructure so that we have a, uh, a clean environment and that our data is safe. Uh, GDPR requires it, you know, all of the data, data protection laws that are going to be placed around require that we protect that. We just take it a little bit further and say that our financial data or any of our data internally is proprietary. We're going to restrict access and how you But it's not it's not about uh, not just about data security because uh, uh, you know cyber security and, and information security uh, they're they're very specific uh, types of, of risks that have also very specific solutions. But uh, I'm more concerned about uh, organizational chaos, <laughs> informational chaos uh, that results from, uh, I'll, I'll give you a practical example, right? I, I, I worked in, 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 in a bank and uh, we were, uh, de we, de we desperately needed a model. And IT said, fine, we'll give you that model in six months. Uh, unfortunately, we absolutely had, it, had to have it in less than a month. I wrote the model. I wrote the model using an MS Access database and uh, a few links in Excel and an absolute bucket load of VBA, which was probably the worst coding I've ever done in my life, but it <laughs> sort of worked if you kind of squinted a bit and didn't mind a few kind of assumptions going in there here and there. Uh, six years after I wrote it, it was still there and performing it function, mm -hmm. right? It's because people assume that if it's there, if it's working, you shouldn't touch it. You shouldn't replace it anymore right. because you know, the, the, the temporary things are, are have the, 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 the longest lifespan, right? I, I know that it fulfilled a function, uh, it fulfilled a need, but it created a big risk. I'm a risk manager, I, I worry about these things. It created a risk. The moment something breaks, no one will be able to untangle that spaghetti code. And uh, frankly, I'm, I'm not working for that organization any, any, anymore. I have written a bit of documentation, but you know, I, I just couldn't be bothered being a user of it. Uh, so. That, that, that is a risk that organization bears. Now, if you have too much of this in an organization, regardless of if the information can be controlled, the information can be secure internally, externally, mm -hmm. but there is a, a, a ticking bomb there somewhere. And I'm sure every organization has mm -hmm. a few systems that no one knows anymore how they work or that they're even there. But... It's only it's only when they fall over that some, suddenly you know some manager doesn't get a report and the shipment doesn't go out or goes out you know uh, empty trucks start start going mm -hmm. around the, the lot. How do you control this? The, uh, there's a difference between control and and then dealing with it. Um, so <laughs> uh, you know a lot of those a lot of systems yes hey. And I'll specifically go and say, I'm experiencing everything that you just said. Um, yes, we have access databases that were written by somebody else. Who knows where these people are? They, they've left the company. You know, um, you know we found out uh, ahead of time, but when Microsoft stopped supporting and stopped producing anything for IT, right? There are systems that we were using that were dependent on Internet Explorer. And while we can still run those systems now in compatibility mode, for how long, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to address those issues as they, as they come up. 
and they're they're everywhere right there it doesn't matter whether it's you know this case or any of the other companies that i work for those systems exist and yes there are access databases you're like okay well you know they work don't touch them um the problem is is that they're running on equipment that is very outdated very old and if it breaks we can't replace it so we address those as they come up and go out and we don't go out and pursue to find them, but we look at our entire uh, operation and start from you know point A to point B, from raw materials to manufacturing, all the way into shipping and finance and everything else to see how does this system work together as a whole. And then you find those parts that are, that are uh, potential you know, gotchas or pitfalls that you're going to run into. Um, I find that, you know, I have uh, an enterprise architecture and their responsibility is to make sure that the entire puzzle fits together and to find all of those missing parts or parts that are going to break and give us, you know, a heads up, say, hey, you know, you, you, we're going to have a potential problem here, and here's the reason why. Uh, we have a higher uh, report that that is that we have that shows all of our systems that run our entire company, and the ones mm-hmm. that are red, yellow, runs that are green, right, that have been replaced or that, that work properly, and we address those. We have them in priority, and we address those in priority. Some of them are, you know, critical. Some of them aren't. Some of them are reporting systems. Grab data out and say, you know, here's how production is running. Um, and we are addressing those. Um, you're going to have. I, I don't care where you go, whether it's financial industry, manufacturing, uh, energy. It doesn't matter. You're good. You're going to see those. Pharma. Can you I, write I've pharma? Seen- uh, I've seen I, I've seen the system which was written in a language that was no longer supported, but it was so critical that there, it was wrapped in a you know bubble foil uh, tightly and uh, okay. no, <laughs> yeah. you just you, you just couldn't get to it. It was dealing with with some 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 sensitive stuff, uh, but the the question that I have because. We sometimes try to be practical in our podcast. Uh, what's your approach to evaluating which system, if it's a, let's say a critical system, uh, takes a priority? Okay, this one, something that you really, let's say, need to rewrite, something that is uh, impossible to salvage. Uh, you just need to replace it. Like, ha- What's your practical approach to deciding, okay, now it's your turn. We need to invest, I don't know, million to five, uh, uh, to, to to replace you, but now it's now it's your time. So, what's your let's say elements that you consider, uh, and how do you 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 in, in your experience prioritize them? Because for the business, it's really, oh my goodness, we need to spend five million. No, it works, and yeah, now you need to tell them <laughs> yes, you need to spend five million, even though it still works because you will lose fifty if it stops working. Well, yeah, you know, there's always an ROI, right? You always have to do it. But the first thing you look at is the buy versus build, right? Um, is, there, is there a system out there that does exactly what we need it to do? And, or is it easier to build something? And mm-hmm. nine out of 10 times, if it's, if it's out there, most likely it's already been built and you can, you can find a system that is pretty much compatible with what you're doing. In other cases, you can't, right? Especially if it's specialty, uh, specialty applications that, that run a piece of equipment that sixty years old. Um, those type of things we do look at and say, okay, what do what do we do? We know that this app that we there is not a purchase application that we go out and and buy to replace this. Um, you know, and in some cases, yes, we can. It's a combined system that will do all of these different things. And by the way, it's going to cost 
five million dollars to to put it in. <laughs> oh, and it, and it's a it's an eighteen month uh, implementation just for one. So those, yes, you do look. We do look at those. We always do a, a return on investment, right? Is it easier for us to build a system? You know, uh, is it going to be short enough time frame? Build another system until we can get to the point of where we can do a full integration system. Uh, it's a purchase package or, or subscription. Is it easier, faster, and more efficient to build it versus trying to wait for this system, right? Because the time frame, the time gaps that you have of when that system is actually going to potentially fail and the time that you're going to implement, let's say, a, a MES, a manufacturing enterprise system, is that time gap, right? So when am I going to do that? Well, I'm not going to do that until, you know, 2025. Okay, well, this system's going to fail next year. So we, we you know, just estimates that it's going to fail next year. So, yeah, we look at that. We also, we do have a, a, a development team that, that addresses, you know, most of those systems quickly. Um, and, yeah, so most of the time we're like, okay, well, let's, Let's do it in a SQL and HTML front end. Usability, right? How, how easy is the system to use? If you find a purchase package, is it easy to use? Is it easy to implement, right? Software, in nine out of 10 times, it's not the affordability of the application itself that's the problem. It's the implementation. So you can find the a integration package. integration with the existing stuff, right? Right. right. So the implementation, you know, you, you go, well, gosh, the implementation is like 10 times what I just paid for this software. <laughs> um, and, and so there's a balance you have to go through and say, is this really worth, you know, is it really going to save us money? Is it really going to improve our production? Is it really going to improve our, our supply chain? Um, and if the answer is, is no or maybe, okay, maybe it's not the right time to do that. You need to look at doing something. So I don't know. If that was a long way around answering that question, Marian. <laughs> no, it, it was it, it it was absolutely satisfactory. Uh, it's I, I, it sparked some of my you know, uh, neurons, and they spark sometimes randomly. Uh, but I would like to 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 go go back to because we spoke about uh, business and uh, how. You have uh, now business analysts to work with business. Uh, so I see how you as IT go out to them to, to help them understand what is happening and to use your tools better. Now, from your experience, what's the best, I don't know, attitude or approach or uh, method from the business to, to, recept, to, to receive it? So... I don't know, should they be open to having some workshops or because it's another problem. You said in SAP, you have so many data tables that people who work on it, they don't know them all. And probably some of this data could be useful for, for business. How do you, you know, encourage business to think probably you have more data that they could use than they realize how to bridge this gap, how to educate them in, in this data content uh to help them yeah you use all the stored data better i think when you when you establish uh whether it's a business analyst or whether it's self talking to internally it's what do you what do you need what do you think you need to run your business better? as far as data reporting analytics what would what would help you do your job better mm -hmm. and what would where, where you're you know i hate using the term pain points because it's not always a pain point right it's lack of data or lack of information lack of understanding how something works and sitting down and talking with them and, and get and, and actually what we call active listening, right? So you're you're listening to what they're saying, 
And in your mind, you're going like, okay, I can do that that way. I can do don't try to solve the problem at that point. Take the data back that they've given you. Take the information back that they've given you. Go to a team of your people because everybody has an idea, whether whether it's you know a BA or whether it's a developer or um, even a IT desktop support guy. I mean, because sometimes they come up with really good ideas and sit down and say, "Look, I have this is what they they say they need." in order to be able to do their job more effectively. Let's, what are the ideas? Give me some ideas of what we can do to help them. It's, sometimes it is a report, right? Hey, you know, if we give them this type of report on a daily basis, they'll be able to see that their salesmen are actually not going out and seeing the customers. They're actually going to the um, and not even with a customer, they're taking their kids. <laughs> so, but, they can, but, you know, maybe that's, you know, they, that's the data they need. Or, you know, we've gone to this customer, uh, we've given them, you know, X amount of samples. Uh, nobody ever followed up. How did that sample work for you? Is it something that you want? Well, okay, we never got input. So, those are the different type of data, you know, data feedback that we can give to our, our business units that might help them do their job better. And it's actually the active listening part from talking to them and helping, you know, yourself understand, okay, well, you know, they see that as a real problem. <laughs> I didn't see that as a problem, you know. Um, they had an old laptop, right? They can't get reports on it. Because the new reports that we are putting out, there it does memory overrun. They can't, can't use it or it's too slow. There's different things that come up if you just go and talk to them and try to find out what they're what they think they need. And then you go back after you put it all together and say, okay, here's what we've come up with. Here are the things that we saw that were the problem are the, the challenges and here's what we're proposing to help you achieve that and you put it in their terms and help you do this or help you do this um, because you said that's what would help you do your job better um, it doesn't always work <laughs> but 90 90 over 90 percent of the time it <laughs> the the problem is that obviously then you 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 run the risk of uh, report proliferation, which uh, we've we've seen so many times. Uh, we've we've mentioned mm -hmm. on this podcast several times the, the story where uh, you know because so many reports were generated when uh, and a, a kind of a review was done, you know three quarters of reports were were thrown out because no one no one was looking at them anymore. They were just finding right. them in email habitually without even opening but uh, obviously the the risk then uh, is a that the it will be kind of burdened with solving businesses problems because things like you, you mentioned where uh, the business is not following up on uh, you know on, on samples given out that's that's not an it problem to solve no. it's ah. the, business the, process the, problem it's a business process problem. On the on the flip side, business might not even be aware what they need because they don't really know what data is there, right? They they might not realize that uh, that the the samples are actually counted and they they could have access to the to the data if they wanted, but it mm -hmm. just never crosses their mind, which is. You know, I'm 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 really surprised that Marian is not not uh, shouting the words data mesh uh, uh, very loudly. Uh, but you know, the, the 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 conjunction of IT and uh, and and business right. and making data findable and available mm -hmm. and uh, and all that. I can, yes, I can explain. I can explain why I'm not jumping. I've been shot by Ken. Uh, early in the conversation, he did the next best thing. He hired people specifically to go to business, talk to them, and to bridge this gap. Because I see the data mesh, it's a data architecture, and it's a pretty expensive tool. But the biggest value that I see <coughs> is this 
putting together people who from business and IT to, and working within the business domain. So if can hire people specifically just to talk to business people and bridge this gap, this is the next best thing. And data mesh in all all this, uh, I would say, technical parts like uh, uh, a specialized platform and and data products may just not be needed in his business. So I'm I'm not jumping because the really critical part. So getting these people out, talking to business, and coming back, and as he said, then saying, okay, so these guys have this problem. What can we do? And engaging uh, this. This is something. This is something that I I I, I think is actually the one of, from, from the people perspective perspective or business process perspective, the, the most important. So it's done. That's why I'm not jumping. I, I, I've been, like, held down already. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so a, a, question, a practical question. Can, do, do you yeah. think that uh, people in the business should be uh, trained, at least to some extent, in areas like data science, databases, um, system architecture, just I'm, I'm not talking about making them system architects, but just, just giving them enough knowledge. So they, they stop saying, okay, IT, just give me something. And they, they have the kind of the, the, the mental space to build the requirements that Realistic. Makes the discussion with IT a bit more level field rather than one directional. I, I'll give you, I, I'll give you the the two sides to that. Um, I agree with keeping people educated and helping them. Understand. Uh, that's the whole purpose of having the spend time with them. Work through. There's that's a double edged sword. Educate, educating them on on data and helping them understand you know the reality of you know in order to produce this report you actually have to take this data and, and merge it together or match it up using keys and then now all of a sudden you're going to get technical right i have to have keys set up and i have to have this key and this key and this key across all of them because if you don't then the Data files won't come together. So when I build your model, guess what? It's not going to work. They're going to they're going to glaze over. They they don't care, right? They, they're like, okay, well, just just give me all of it. Put it all in one thing, <laughs> and I'll choose what I report on. That goes back to what your other point was, which is, aren't you going to be proliferated with all these reports? Yes and no. If you give self service. And unlimited self service, and they can go out and produce their reports. Those reports are on their on their desktops or their laptops. Actually, it's in OneDrive. Con conscience, conscience, conscience. It's on their right. conscience, <laughs> right? So what we do is that we have a set of reports that are available that are produced by between the business and IT for say revenue and profitability or uh, income statements balance sheets those are produced and written in-house by our it department in conjunction with the business that's what management goes by they go by those reports because those have been validated written and assured that that data is correct and that those those numbers and things are coming if you choose to do a self-service in your report and you produce a report for, let's say, inventory, and it doesn't match the inventory report that, that we've produced, it's invalid. And, and that's the way the business has been trained to understand how reporting works. So it's, it's an education process. It took two and a half years to get them to that. I just, <laughs> you know, Forehand, it was like, I can produce this report. I know it's correct. I produced it because I pulled this data directly out of, you know, X, Y, Z. Excel. Right, Excel. Right. It's it's my Excel spreadsheet. And it, okay, reproduce it. <laughs> you know, and, and it, yeah, you get that. That's what you get. It's like, yeah. What? No, reproduce it. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, you have to make it global. It 
can't just be. So the education process takes a while, but I think that once you get, once you've proven some things like, hey, this report's accurate and it's being used in the reporting of our financials, you know, up the chain, and they see that that's what it is and that it's accurate, then they start to to let up a little and say, okay, you know, maybe you guys are, are doing it right. We're not solving their business problems. All we're doing is going back and asking them, what do you need or what can we provide you that will help you do your job better? That's not solving their business problems. That's becoming an mm -hmm. active participant and making sure they're successful. At what they do. I love it. Okay, well, I I, th I think this 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 sums it up nicely because uh, you know we've we've gone from uh, uh, providing kind of a, a, a very strict IT driven uh, service to linking it through with with business analysts, people who essentially, like Marion said, bridge bridge the gap, and they 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 are absolutely necessary. I think in some environments, in most environments, actually, uh, but. What what you've what you've said just can I think can be summarized in a in 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 a sentence you know give them the freedom but on a very tight leash so <laughs> that you keep keep them where you can see them so that you enable them to do you enable business to do what they what what they want to do but in such a way that it doesn't explode in your face after right. after too long right. Uh, yes. I think I think this is a, a good place to to to, to kind of sum up uh, because uh, you know we don't want to get to get in this episode too technical. There will, there will be time time and place for for that. But I think that the the the, the key point that we 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 want to emphasize uh, from this is that people talking to people, as you said, active listening, educating them, and explaining to them both the possibilities and the limitations so they don't expect that you, you can just open up a database and the truth is in there somewhere they just they just have to rummage around find it that will make the, the, the conversation productive thank you very much ken uh it's 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 been very very instructive if people want to contact you uh linkedin or do you want to uh, share some other resources that you might uh, have available oh certainly they can reach out on linkedin uh, but they can also uh, send, send an email. Uh, it's uh, ken.ponder at biscase.com, B-I-S-K-A-S-E.com. Um, that's the easiest way to get me. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it was really great talking to you. And uh, as always, uh, let's hope it was of use to someone. Thank you for listening. Also, don't miss the next one, where we'll be talking to Panduka Nagahawate, Vice President of Data Science at Majestic Steel USA, about building data science capability. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or visit ddr.show to find out more information about future episodes and guests. You can also check out cognition.llc for more information about Cognition Shared Solutions, our services, and other events hosted by us. For now, is thank you from myself, your friendly neighborhood data guy, Dr. Marian Sibiak, and my co-host, Artur Guja. Thank you.